Welcome to episode 9 of Microbrews, my new video series on how to make the best use of a microscope in your home or craft brewery. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to prepare a dry mount and then use chemical dyes to stain your sample in order to better view yeast and bacteria in your brewery samples. For this video, I'm going to assume that you know how to use your microscope and perform a serial dilution. If you're unfamiliar with serial dilutions, please watch episode 6 of Microbrews. If you need help with using your microscope, please watch episodes 1 to 5. For this exercise, you're going to need a few special items. You're going to need a Bunsen burner or an alcohol lamp. If you don't have a Bunsen burner, you can make an alcohol lamp quite easily. And I have instructions for this in one of my videos in the Home Yeast Lab Made Easy video series. You will also need a slide, a dropper, a felt pen, and some sort of dye to stain your yeast and bacteria with. Now here I'm actually going to show you three different dyes. This first one here is saffron, sometimes called saffron O. This is probably one of the most commonly used microbiological dyes out there, and you can often buy a prepared solution on Amazon. I prefer malachite green, which is the sample in the middle, uh, which can be a little bit harder to find, but which I find gives a more intense color to the stain. But a very easy option for most brewers to find is the tripan blue solution that you use for viability staining, which I covered back in episode 7 as well as in episode 8. If you're preparing your own dyes, saffron, sometimes called saffron O, should be made up as a 0.6 solution. Ideally this should be diluted in a dilutant that is 20% ethanol, 80% water. And this can be very easily made by buying the cheapest vodka you can find, which should be 40% alcohol, and mixing it with an equal amount of water. You can then use that solution to prepare the dye. If you're making malachite green, Prepare a 1% solution in water, and tripan blue should be prepared the same as for viability staining, which is 0.4% in water. So to start, what you want to do is take your slide and near one end, draw a circle. Into that region, you want to place just one small drop of your uh, yeast or bacterial suspension, and you want to spread that out as evenly as you possibly can inside of that area with the circle. And feel free to go past that line afterwards if you need to. This is just to make it easy to find your sample when you're done. You then need to let this sit and dry in the air until it is completely dried. Once your sample is dry, you're going to want to heat fix it. This will bind the cells to the slide as well as kill them, assuring that the dyes have good access to the inside of the cells. So light your Bunsen burner or alcohol lamp, and then holding the slide as far away from your ring as possible, quickly pass it through the flame four to five times. When this is done, the slide should be hot to the touch, but not burning. For a Bunsen burner, you're only gonna to wanna to do this two to three times. Once you've heat fixed your sample to the slide, the next step is to stain them. What I would recommend doing is placing your slide into a ceramic bowl or dish so that any spills will be contained and won't stain either yourself or your countertops or whatever it is you're working on. What you want to do is place the minimal amount of dye necessary to cover the sample that you put down in your circle and then incubate that for one minute to allow the, the dye to stain the cells. Once your staining is complete, you need to rinse it off. You can do this in the sink with water, or here I'm just going to use a bowl with a syringe. And the secret is, you want to run the water slowly over the sample without spraying it directly. Spraying it directly may knock off your yeast, whereas by flowing the liquid across, you should de-stain without losing your sample. Once sufficiently rinsed, this can be placed on paper to dry, or if you're in a rush, pressed gently between sheets of absorbent paper like paper towel. Here's the saffron stained sample at 100x. 
as you can tell, it's not high enough of a magnification to really see what's going on. If we go up to 400x, we can start to see some cell shapes, but what we really need when we're working with samples like this is a full 100x magnification. To view these samples using a 100x lens, we simply apply the oil directly to our sample. There is no need to worry about placing a cover slip or any other thing between the sample and your lens. You can image directly using an oil lens on a sample containing heat fixed and stained yeast. So again, you place a small droplet at the imaging point on your sample and just slowly and carefully slide your 100x lens into position. So here's an example of the same yeast sample stained with saffron, with malachite green, and with tripan blue. As you can see, these stain cells to a different extent and to a different intensity, but they all allow you to more easily see the cell shape as well as smaller objects like bacteria. With high magnification, like the 1000X I'm showing you here, you should easily be able to make out major morphological features, patterns of cell division, and other important microbiological features that can help you track and identify what's present in your samples. So that is how to prepare a dry mount for viewing cell morphology. Please join me in episode 10, which will be the final episode of Microbrews, to learn how to use some free software to automate some of this analysis, as well as how to archive images for future use.